Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got a nice group. We've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, the Land hey. Guru. Mike, how are you? I'm fantastic. Well rested and uh, happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about the vacation. <laughs> Eric Landopia.com Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Phenomenal. And shh, don't talk. It's David Banalis, the Facebook whisperer. David, how are you? I'm amazing, Mark. How are you? Uh, pulse is normal. Respiration's fine. And last but not least, Six Sigma, Scott Todd from landmoto.com. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I love listening on landmoto.com. It's, 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 so, it's so fantastic. It's so much better than like Land Watch or Land and Farm. More, we have a uh, hundred over 150 properties listed on uh, Land Moto, and traffic each week is literally doubling. And we're about to pull out some um, some new advertising mark that will will uh, I think will sh- kind of shock the um, shock the page views up. And I'm very excited about it. so that's coming out uh, soon. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, let's start with Mike Zeno. Mike Zeno, how, yes. how was it going on vacation? Did you have any, any struggles? Like, let's just talk about rest. Yeah. I, I mean, I love this business. I have a hard time breaking away from it, I'll be honest. With, you know, and not so much, again, I'm not doing the land business all day long, but I just, I get, I get a lot of uh, excitement out of it, you know, getting, uh, you know, the new deals coming in and monitoring it. So it is a little difficult, I think, to pull away from that because, I do enjoy it. So that's, it's kind of unique about this business, right? When I, I mean, I did not think one time about the fire department. It was no, uh, oh man, I wish, I mean, not that I don't love my firefighter brothers and all that. I, I love it, but uh, it's different. It's like, this is just, it's like you're sitting on a gold mine all the time. And there's always a little opportunity. So, I mean, we, we, my system closed a couple of deals down there. We made some good money while I were down there. So, I mean, I didn't do it. The system did it. It is difficult to kind of pull away at times. I, I will have to admit because not, just because it is an exciting business. I always tell people, anybody who's been doing this business for any period of time actually loves talking about it, enjoys it because of all the things it does for us. So um, I guess that's the reality of it, you know, but I mean, I, I had a great time. I was re- I'm rejuvenated. Um, but yeah, when you're on vacation, it's a little bit difficult to totally pull your mind out because, you know, you're always peeking in and seeing what the VAs are doing and, oh, look at that. That's coming down the pike, you know? And uh, like I said, we sold a few properties, which is cool, you know? So, uh, you know, I guess that's kind of the gist of it. It was fantastic, though. Had a wonderful time. All Going right. back, I think. Well, don't tell the kids a surprise. Like, I won't let them watch this podcast. <laughs> All right, fantastic. How about you, Eric Peterson? How do you, how do you unwind and relax and sort of uh, find your, your moment of zen? Um, you know, I think it, it probably takes me getting away from, from home traveling somewhere. Um, but, uh, I mean, even then I'm still at this point in, in my process and everything, I'm still somewhat involved. Um, I actually have a vacation coming up here, uh, at the beginning of July, heading up to, uh, Northern Wisconsin, uh, to my parents' cabin. And I'm trying to get a bunch of things in order so that, um, I can spend less time on the business while I'm away and, and uh, get a little bit more relaxation out of it. So. All right. Fantastic. Uh, David Banalis, how about you? You know, I've never been afraid of relaxation, Uh, (laughs) AKA sometimes I can be lazy, but at the same time this year, like if any year of my entire life, I've, I've had more pressure this year than I've ever had. But at the same time, I still, consciously try to at least get one evening a week where I don't do anything land related. And so slap on the wrist, right? It should be at least seven evenings that I should be doing that. Uh, as long as I'm getting one evening, <laughs> my wife is happy. <laughs> All right. Well, good, good. Happy wife, happy life. Scott Todd, how about you? How do you, how do you unwind? Uh, you know, I, Mark, I think that, um, I've kind of gotten into this rhythm of um, kind of taking vacations around boot camp, believe it or not, you know, like um, 
you know, like I, I try to pair in family events uh, or extra days of stay around there. And so what I'll do is, you know, like, um, for example, the, there's a boot camp coming up in January yet to be named, but we kind of have some ideas. And I was telling my wife, okay, do you want to go back to that city? And she's like, uh, no, I've been there a couple of times. I want to go somewhere else. And I'm like, well, if we're on the West Coast, we might as well, like, you know, if I'm already there, I might as well just go somewhere else out on the West Coast. So, you know, like we might visit Napa or something. For, and, and so it's like smaller chunks, if you will. It might be three or four days at a time. But then it's still that uh, the ability to relax and to get away. And I think that the secret is like be willing to like just don't put pressure on yourself. Like I've got to do something because you don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I struggle with this a lot because, um, and I was reading this in like Homo Deus, like our, our, gen, our genetics or our biochemical, you know, reactions don't care about our happiness, right? They only care about us like doing stuff, right? And like the purpose of like, you know, being kind of human beings, like, hey, let's, let's evolve or whatever it is. Like, like ultimately, like we're, we're kind of doing stuff all the time. And so to not do anything, feels kind of like you know strange sometimes to to fully be present in relaxation like um like meditating or you know laying on a beach um you know i can do for a little bit of a time but like to take a whole like you know let's say week off like i did last week um for uh you know like personal reasons like my son got sick and i had to go to the hospital like it was really hard to be present and like not check email, not check box and really just do that and, and relax. Um, because I didn't plan that in a way, like it kind of like was forced on me and then I'm going back and forth. Like I'm really grateful I can do this and I can take this time off and, and everything's working. And then there's part of me like, like just struggles with it. I mean, Mike Xander, do you have any of that issues? Like that little voice should you, sh- you know, yeah. It's nice that you're taking vacation, but now you should check your email and get yeah. back to that, you know, whatever. Definitely. But I, I agree with you totally there. But I also agree with what you said about these little moments. And I think that it's important to take, you know, like a mini vacation for five minutes every day or, you know, just to kind of sit still. And, you know, it doesn't have to be some sort of Eastern uh, meditation. It could be outside just sipping your coffee, listening to the, uh, the wind or the, 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 the birds. Or, but to take a moment in your day, you know, where you're kind of – just setting aside to do nothing because it is difficult for people to do nothing. There's always something going on. And I think times like that, at least once or twice a day, um, you could center around your coffee or whatnot. It definitely does help reset you and keep you from really getting swallowed up in a rat race that can, you know, consume any of us at any time. Definitely. Yeah. yeah but that, then, then David Benalis is going to look at you and be like, well, you're being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you David, be lazy. So, da- so David, you've, you've got that, like that, that voice in your head saying, Hey, if you can't rest too long, you're being lazy. Like, how do you, how do you reconcile with that? That's a tough one because that's the voice that's been in my head since I was a kid and it was my dad's voice. <laughs> so, <laughs> I actually, I got to go to therapy to get that voice out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard, right. work, hard work is so ingrained that it's hard to break free from it, but yet I've traveled the most out of any family member I, I have. So I do have somewhat of a balance where it's, you know, work hard, play hard. Yeah. I think that's kind of where I am right now in life. But yeah. Eric, Eric Peterson, what about you? Do you have, you have that little should voice in your head? Like you're taking vacation. You're like, I know I shouldn't check my email, but I'm going to. It's going to make me feel so uh, much better. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it is. It's hard to get away. Um, you know, kind of like Mike was saying, um, you know, there's, there's an excitement to what we do and, and watching those deals come in and, and looking at them and saying, you know, here's, here's kind of the, the next deal coming in. And it's, you know, to see the possibilities there. Um, it's, it's hard to just <laughs> not, not pay attention to that. So. Yeah. You're, you're like me, Eric, you're, you're a dopamine addict. Like <laughs> you want that hit. They get a deal. Yep. It's in, it's in the <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Scott, Todd, what about you? Can you just be, can, can you go on the boat and not check your email? 
Well, l- let me tell you the secret to going on the boat and not checking your email. Here it is. Watch this. You take off your glasses, you put on sunglasses that are not prescription glasses, and then you can't read your dang email. <laughs> that's how you do it, right? Like that's how you force yourself to like get away. And it's kind of funny because I was, I went on the boat on Saturday and uh, was having a great time and uh, looked down at my phone and the phone is kind of hit or miss, right? Like sometimes it can bring you good news. Other times it can bring you like not so good news, right? So you gotta be very careful of what kind of news is this phone gonna bring me today. And uh, when I got back to, the, to shore, I like popped on my glasses and looked and the email that was present was uh, a, a sale with a $2,700 down payment. So it's like, okay, well, while I was out having fun on the boat, playing with my drone, okay, as Mike said, the system, the system kicked in and sold a property that will add passive income to me for the next five years. And I got like almost all my money back on the down payment. It's crazy. I love this business. I really do. Um, all right, let's, let's pivot now. And uh, let's talk about a post on the official Land Geek Motivation, Wealth, and Creation Group, which if you haven't joined, by the way, is free to join. Uh, it, it said, how to sell property in three weeks, something like that. Scott Todd, what did the post say? It was saying, you know, how, how do you sell a property in three weeks? And there's been, a, you know, there's been some back and forth along, it, along the conversation. But it, it, to me, it kind of created a challenging question. Can you sell a property in three weeks? I can. I mean, like I, I mean, but I don't know if that's because I have a mess of buyers list and I sent out uh, a piece. I know how I would sell it if I had three weeks to sell a property. But I was just kind of curious. What would you guys do? Sell to Zeno. Zeno, what would you do? <laughs> Well, the secret to selling anything quickly is making it irresistible. And we, and we always talk about that. That is true. Like even me, when I wholesale properties, if I want to wholesale them, I have to make them irresistible. I have to make them at a price that people see the return they're going to get and that they want them. And then the property moves quickly. So if you're, you're not going to move a property in three weeks, if you're trying to get what you think it's worth and not what the market thinks it's worth, that's going to be very uh, difficult for you to do. I mean, you might find somebody eventually with lots of, uh, you know, consistent marketing or whatnot that'll pay that for it. But, you know, a lot of times you have to realize that our money and our business isn't set on one deal. We do multiple deals. That's why we have systems. That's why we have VAs. That's why we do, that's how we do it. So you're not looking to base everything on one deal. So it's not going to make or break you. So don't try to get this huge, you know, kind of crazy return on it that maybe the market says isn't, you know, what, isn't right. You know, this is what it really says, but you're asking over here, but guess what? I even ask a little bit lower because I buy so cheap and I still make a ton of money and I still make it irresistible. So I think the way to sell it quickly is, and I know we owe it, it's redundant and it's make it irresistible, but also recognizing on the flip side, uh, the way to make it irresistible is to recognize that you don't create that irresistible price. The market does. And once you know what the market is, then you know where you're irresistible prices. So absolutely very simple to sell a property in three weeks. If you list it for the right price, <laughs> don't try to make it something more than it is. Yeah. It's, I, I couldn't have said that better myself, but let's just put Eric Peterson on the spot and see if he can even <laughs> add to that to make it even more irresistible. And by the way, Eric, this on purpose from uh, earlier, getting it, getting it back. <laughs> I could have asked David that same question, but I'm not. I, I don't know that there's much to add to that. I, the one thing I guess um, that comes to mind is um, the, the property itself may play a factor in the timing of the sale. I mean, yes, price is obviously a huge factor, um, but you know, if you have one of those properties that is maybe a little more unique in some way, whether it's, um, extremely remote, hard to get to, or, you know, uh, Scott's swamp story or different things of that nature. I mean, um, even with an irresistible price, you still have got to find that right buyer. So, I mean, having your marketing everywhere, getting that property out there is key, but just remember that there are properties, um, that are just going to move quicker because they have a broader audience. Yeah, that's true. And I, I actually liked what you, you said about that, by, about being everywhere. 
So as thorough and amazing as Mike's answer was, Eric, you were able to even expand on it even more. Wow. <laughs> so uh, phenomenal. So David Benalis, three weeks to sell a property. You could go to Craigslist, you go to your buyer's list, you go to Facebook or the neighbors. What would be your order? Mm, three weeks. Well, it's like, am I getting 2,700 down like Scott? Or am I going to get 99 down like what I usually do? So that's, would, would, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Scott gets these big downs. <laughs> so <laughs> a, a big down like that, that's going to come from my buyer's list, right? They've already, they know, like, and trust me. So I can ask for a larger down because we have, I've already developed somewhat of a relationship with them, even though it's through email. Uh, if I'm looking for a quick 99 down, just lock up, just move a property. Yeah. Facebook buy, sell groups. It's just, it's not that hard. Um, just go to the toolkit, copy me exactly what I did and you'll sell a property. But I think to add more context to the question was, uh, uh, this gentleman, he posted, uh, any tips on moving a property in less than three months? And then another, three weeks, three weeks. No, no. So he mentioned three months. Oh, he three did. Months. Yeah. Another geek mentioned aim oh, for three yeah, weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three months. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So another geek mentioned aim for three weeks. And he says, that's even better. How do I do that? And then I chimed in, well, why don't you shoot for three days or even three hours? And then, you know, a conversation of uh, what comes first, the education or the money for the, <laughs> you know, from your first uh, flip. So that's a, that's a whole conversation within itself. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it is. It is. A, it is interesting how people are. Uh, they want to. They want to move the needle in their life, but they don't want to do the proper. They don't want to properly get educated. It's like I want to be a doctor, but I'm going to start doing surgery first, and then I'll go to medical school after I do my first successful surgery. And it doesn't make any sense logically, and people know it intuitively that they're going to spend a lot more time, and ultimately they could actually spend a lot more money on a mistake than if they just went and got properly trained but i think it all comes down to fear right um fear of the unknown and it's you're, you're taking a leap of faith every time you go into a, a new program and it's it's like well if i do if i do this education i'm really committing to this now like i put my money where my mouth is and i have to do it so i think there's that fear and i think there's there's entropy scott todd why else would somebody not want to get properly educated uh, I mean, look, there, there are people that, that just don't have the money to do it, right? Like there's, there are people that it, it's, uh, it's a struggle to, to do it. Um, you know, I, I, think that, I think that that's the person, like to, to me, if you really, if the investor's toolkit or if, um, if you know, that is, is, is a huge expense that you really need to sell first, I would tell you that you probably do need the investor's toolkit because... I mean, like figure out a way to do it because at the end of the day, you already have the big why, you already have that big motivation and you know, it's that burning desire that will allow you to exceed and go faster in it. It's, it's when you have a burning desire. If you, I mean, Mark, I've taken classes, I'm sure you have too. Like I take a class and yeah, I'm gonna get the most out of it. But then if I don't have a burning desire because it's not necessarily solving that true pain point that I have, I'm not going to like, I might get value out of it, but I may not execute everything, right? But man, when I have a burning desire and I have a problem to solve, you better believe I'm following that system to a T. To a T, I'm not changing a thing. I mean, I'm going to follow that recipe because I'm not a chef yet. I'm still yeah, on. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the same exact way. And I, I buy education courses all the time. And ultimately, it's just, you know, if I even get 10% out of it, the ROI on it's massive, massive. Um, all Mark, right, our last, yes, Scott. Wait, I would say that if you really have to sell, and, you know, I think all the answers were great, but I would say that um, when, when I absolutely need to sell a property, I will take that down payment and just, Forget, forget trying to sell it for cash. I'll take that down payment, drop it to like not zero, but make it irresistible. You know, no, I mean, if you can you imagine, like I, I sold my first property, a 40 acre property for $99 down. Some guys walk around this planet saying, dude, I bought 40 acres for $99 down from some idiot over there in Florida. <laughs> and, okay, so, so be it. And then I would take that note and I would sell the note, sell the cash flow. Bam, now I have money for the investor's toolkit 
boom, problem solved, and I'm off to the races. That's what I would do. It's not a bad strategy. Not at all. It's a genius strategy. It's genius. <laughs> you when, when, when's the unlimited funds course coming out, Scott? Oh, Mark, wait, wait, wait until, and this kind of brings us to the next topic, but wait until you see what, well, wait till the community sees what we have planned coming up next. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get, let's get to the, the, the topic of um, sharing, which, you know, we're all about sharing. And I think if you've been following us for a while, you know, we, we really don't hold a lot back. And, you know, I know the investor's toolkit is going to save you a lot of time. Um, but, you know, if you really want to do this business, you could go on the YouTube channel. You could go on the Facebook group for free. I mean, you could actually figure this out very quickly just with all the free information. Um, it's just that the toolkit makes it really easy to do um, and saves you time, which ultimately I would make the argument can always make more money, can't get more time. Anyways, I, I digress. Sharing versus holding back for a strategic advantage. David Banalis, what's, what's your <laughs> thought on this? You got to start with me, right? <laughs> so, I mean, David, David is a notorious share. I, I, uh, like, like we have a, a elite weekend <laughs> coming up and we're like, David, save that for elite. <laughs> So I, I have a spectrum. Let's say it's a needle, right? Where like I, you don't share anything and you share everything. So I lean more towards sharing everything, but I've learned to put value on my skills and knowledge over the last few months uh, underneath the tutelage of the rest of the coaches here. Um, and so here's the thing. I do share just about anything, but I limit the audience and who I, whom I share it with. And even then, I would probably overshare, <laughs> but if anything, I understand that the more I share, the more I'm going to get in return, whether it's feedback or just more inspiration. Uh, you can go the woo woo uh, stuff with that. But yeah, I mean, I do, I do lean towards oversharing, but I have learned to limit the audience with whom I'm sharing it. Right now I'm in an apartment in a, in Detroit and I'm not telling anyone why I'm here. <laughs> Because of the strategic advantage that you have in that city right now, looking at raw land. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. Playing very coy. Eric Peterson, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, well, I, mean, I guess, first of all, I don't, I don't really feel like I have information that, that anybody else doesn't have. Um, but, you, but you do, especially in – is as a coaching client you definitely do yeah i mean i guess i do but it, it just doesn't feel that way i guess to me and i guess i would kind of lean like david does in that um i am almost always willing to to share information if uh if someone reaches out to me and and asks you know a specific question um you know i I really don't have anything to hide. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to mask things or, you know, um, not answer a question fully. Um, so, I mean, I guess in that sense, my audience is very limited. Um, you know, there's, there's very few that, that I talk to in that, that sense, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty, pretty willing to, to open up and, and share information. Well, now your audience just grew by a hundredfold because, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, people are going to go on Facebook like, oh, let's get free coaching from Eric. <laughs> right. Well, tell me everything. Uh, Mike Zeno, what about you? <laughs> well, I think this kind of parallels like my, my growing up in the martial arts, I was like, you know, there's all these, you wonder about are these secret teachings are these things that, you know, what are these things on the inner circle and what's going on? And the reality is that, yeah, there are certain bits of information and, and a whole bunch of, uh, things that are kind of reserved for the inner circle, but that's just because people such as us take the time, take the money, and we put ourselves in the right place at the right time. I mean, things present themselves at certain times. And if you're not there and you're not around when this is happening, you're not going to get that information. So I wouldn't say that I so much hold it back, but it's just a matter of 
people have to actually make the effort to be where the information is, whether that be flight school, whether that be on coaching, whether that be at the boot camps or uh, anything. I mean, you just, just really, that's life. You have to take the initiative and put yourself where that is. You can't sit back and expect people to come find you and give it to you. You know, it it doesn't work that way. You have to want it. You have to seek it and you have to go for it. And when people see that and they, when you look and you see someone that's really, you know, spending the time, spending the money, then you say, geez, this person's sincere. This person's real. And you open up to them. It's just like, you know, us becoming friends. We open up to each other. And so the only way you're going to get this kind of information that uh, if you want to call it quote unquote secret is the is to develop a relationship by being where you should be, by dealing with the people you should be dealing with and, you know, and associating with the people you should associate with. So yeah, there's definitely certain bits of information that make this business easier, but just be, be where it is, go for it. You know, don't hold back. I mean, do you really want to succeed or do you kind of sort of kind of want to succeed and you want someone to like, I've had someone say, geez, I want to have a, have you mailed yet? No, I'm waiting for my VA. Well, no, no, you need to mail first. You need to get the process going. And then after that, you can go get a VA and train them. You don't put the cart before the uh, horse, you know, you, you need to be in the right places. You need to be circular yourself or, I mean, associate yourself with the right people. And then all these secrets we're talking about, no one's going to hold them back from you if you put the right effort in. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, okay. So, you know, like one of the things that, that um, really, I might say it drives me crazy, but one of the things that, that I think is funny is when somebody is having success with something, okay, and that is in a way their strategic advantage, okay? Like there's things that I have success with or areas that I have success with, it's my strategic advantage as a company. I have a fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders, me and my wife and my family, I have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize our shareholder value. I mean, that's, that is the core of any company. That's the, the core job of any executive of any company. Just look at Amazon. Amazon's job is to maximize shareholder value. They just, they just announced uh, Whole Foods, that they're buying Whole Foods. And they, they have, obviously, they're not just buying it. Oh, okay, we just bought a, a grocery store. They're going to do something with that store, right? Like, that, that's their strategic advantage. And you know, I think that you, sometimes when you find success, like deep, deep success, it's okay to show other people like how to mine for gold, but it doesn't mean that you bring them into your, into your gold mine and tell me here, take it all, take it with me. Like, I think that there's certain things that you, that you have, that's a strategic advantage to you that you have every right to kind of hold back on. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you're not sharing. It just means that you can share in other ways. You can educate in other ways. It doesn't mean though that you have to kind of say, Hey, here's, here's the exact County that I'm having success in this particular area. Come with me. It's more of, Hey, you can find success anywhere. Here's how you go do it. Here's how I found the areas that's successful to me. But it doesn't mean that I have to like dig in and, and like just take somebody and plant them. Here's my gold mine. Uh, I mean, no company in the world does that. No, they don't. A- absolutely. Um, and I, I think that it's, I think, I think everyone's made a really, a really strong point. And I could see a listener, like a, like a coaching client, for example, that's made a huge investment thinking to themselves, well, geez, I'm making, I'm making this big investment in the coaching. Are these guys not telling me everything? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> right. Um, we are telling you more than 99% of the people that are not in the coaching program, right? But are we going to give you the, the, you know, the secrets to everything that we've done? Well, the answer might be yes and no. It depends on what level of coaching you are. Like if you're an elite weekend, that's when we totally open the kimono, right? But only a few people can do that, right? But the, 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 the real substance of it is, are we giving you the information that you need to move the needle in your life? And I can say definitively, because we have an overwhelming amount of proof, that we are giving you everything you need and more to do very, very well in this business. And at the same time, not hurting our own little veins of gold in a market that is massive, right? Now, the question then would become, well, if, 
you know, the market shrunk to a point where we couldn't give you any information, then you'd, we'd have to say, well, either we're out of business in our land invest business and then doing just education, which a lot of people do. And I would say, I would make the argument that they're doing a disservice to their community. So, you know, because now they're, they're teaching something that they can't do themselves because that market has shrunk to a point. And now it's, it's, I, I don't even know what the word for it is. I guess it's, what is it? Fraud? Well, it's, yeah. oh, it's almost like a dead, a dead market, you know, in that case that they're not, um, you know, they're teaching yesterday's stuff. And Mark, I mean, that's not, not, to, not to make you feel good, but that is one of the reasons why, like when I was doing my research of, of who to choose for education, I chose the land geek is because of all the people that are out there teaching, <laughs> of all the people that are out there like teaching land investing, there's only one, there's only one that's actually doing deals every single day. I don't care what other people tell you, there's only one. Uh, you know, you, I might start getting hate mail telling me I'm wrong. And if so, let's prove it. But uh, you know, I will tell you that from what I see, there's, there's one, one company. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and I, I, I know for me personally, not to knock anybody else, but like, I don't think I could sleep well at night knowing that I'm teaching something I'm not personally doing every single day. Now, just because I may not be the one calling the County anymore, where I'm be the one, you know, you know, taking screenshots of GIS maps doesn't mean that I'm not leading the strategy. I'm not watching, you know, my own frontier <laughs> equity properties deals. Like we need to close deals every single day for me to continue teaching. Like I got to be a little bit ahead of everybody, even, even the Zen master, just a little bit, you know, maybe not miles anymore, but just a little anyways, just one degree, just one, just, degree one, just one degree. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right, Eric Peterson, we're at that point in the podcast now where we get to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. Today I've got Tally, T-A-L-L-Y. It's an iPhone app. And uh, Mark, you're probably going to knock it, but I think, <laughs> well, we'll see what you have to say. And then I'll, I'll give you my, <laughs> my comment after that. But, All right. but basically, um, you know, it's, it's for tracking goals or um, any little you know, pieces of information you want to, you want to track for yourself and kind of, you know, keep a, a streak, if you will. And, um, it's, uh, it's just a really nicely made app. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, it could have uses for, for different people in this business, whether it's tracking their mailings and marketing or, um, keeping up with reading books or, or whatever it might be. So, and it's free. No, it's That's not. It's a dollar 99. No, poor, poor Eric. Tally, man. Tally, tally counters? A, no, not commerce. Counters. Just tally. T a l l y. A simple goal tracker and activity counter. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now I see it. It's free. And it streaks, is free. And I'm the one sorry. that you're going to bring up is not free. So that's why <laughs> oh, I'm recommending this. Preemptive attack. <laughs> I like poor, that. Poor Eric is gun shy. He he's like <laughs> okay. Before I even tell you what it is, go ahead and unload on me, Mark. And oh, before you unload on me, can you throw this other one at me? I, I hear. I mean, I'm you know ready. I, I, I'm I, res prepared. I respect the preparation. Good job. <laughs> All right. Ne next week, I'm bringing two. <laughs> now, for everybody that doesn't know the inside joke between Eric and I and Scott, last year, Scott, Ty, and I had a uh, competition, right? Um, who would do the most deals? Now, I don't like to talk about it too much because Scott did 197 deals. I did 192. And uh, Eric Peterson sent Scott a Team Scott shirt, clearly going into his camp. To this day, I would not let him live it down. So that's why I like to uh, haze. It was a wise move, wise move. And, you know, it's, it's proving today to be a very wise move because now he's prepared for all the little digs that I could give him at any point in time, but he's prepared. All right. Zen master, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> well, it's going to be another quote, but I think it's relevant to today's discussion. Uh, another quote from the Buddha. Are you ready? Too cold, too hot, too late. 
basically reminding us to stop making excuses. This whole business really is about creating new habits and sticking to these habits every day and not, you know, sitting back and expecting things to happen without effort. There is effort that we do uh, employ. I mean, you have to try to make things happen, but it's where you put the effort. It's how you develop your system. So uh, basically too cold, too hot, too late. Just let, reminding us to stop making excuses. There's no, I mean, if we're doing this business, anybody can do this business. It's just a matter of developing those daily habits, those daily routines, getting your mailings out, getting your marketing out. And uh, yeah, so stop making excuses. That's that's my two sides. That's my quote. Too hot, too cold, too, cold, too, late. too late. No excuses. <laughs> I like it. David Benalis in, in the beautiful city of Detroit. Yeah. What's your tip of the week? I don't know about I don't know about beautiful. Uh, <laughs> my tip of the week is a Chrome extension called Momentum. You um, can't do that. No, 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 no. I totally stole. I stole Scott's. No yes. way. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> wow. Man, wow. Dude, this, it's like finding gold whenever you take Scott's tip of the week. So I'm, oh, I'm sitting a little bit taller right now. If the audience can't see I you know, sense a team mock participant there. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> yes. I, actually, for the record, for the record, and Mark, okay. Mark's my witness. I already laid that one down, but you go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 will vo- I will vouch for Scott. Our oh, podcast man. earlier, he yeah. did lay it down. And I actually used the extension. But <laughs> But it's okay, David. Okay. Go for it, because I love it. Look, okay. Scott, you know close only counts. I have about the, uh, <laughs> you know, because honestly, Scott might not share everything he knows about momentum. <laughs> he oh, might hold on to a little oh. bit of strategic advantage. I'm oh. going to share everything. <laughs> oh. oh. And I wouldn't expect anything less from the millennial. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Oh man, when you open a new tab with momentum, it's obviously it's got some beautiful graphics, but most importantly for me, it's the to-do list. And if you're opening a new tab and you're going to hop on Facebook and you realize, oh shoot, I need to get this done. It's a nice firm kick in the butt to keep you on task. And now I'm going to have a picture of Scott Todd right there staring at me (laughs) every time I open a new tab. All right. I, I, I actually, I love that, uh, that Chrome extension. Scott, the only thing is like, if, if I get like a hundred Chrome extensions, are they like WordPress plugins? Does it slow know. things up? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Okay. That's good then. Chrome I got a, I got a lot of extensions. All right. No worries. <laughs> Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week now that David took it? Uh, my, my tip is, um, check out stickermule.com. Stickermule.com. And, uh, for all your sticker needs, it's cheap. It's easy. Um, I actually had some, some cool stickers made up. It was very, very inexpensive, very easy process. And they run, they do run, um, they run deals from time to time. So like today, Today, I mean, this is, you know, if you're listening to this, you might have already missed it. But today, you, they have a deal where you get um, like 100 like round stickers for like $29, okay? So, you know, it's, it's good because you can use these stickers for anything. Give them to customers. Uh, put them on your mailings to try something new. You know, how can, how can I stand out from David or, or Eric or Mark? Uh, just try different things. And um, Sticker Mule might be your friend. Yeah, I mean, Scott, would you use this like a like a glue gift for a for a you seller? Could. And I I've done that. All right, that's kind of cool. I mean, how would you would you do it for your branding or would you do it for them? Like putting uh, like I did a it, picture. I did it for their... branding. So what I did was I created these stickers, and um, any time someone bought a property from me, uh, I mailed them uh, mailed them some stickers, and I've yet to see one floating around town. But I mean, you know, I don't know. Anything can happen. All right, great, great. Well, my tip of the week is, I always like going back to this book at least once a year, is personalmba.com. Uh, have you guys read personalmba.com? Yes. Mike? Scott's a yes. Mike, have you read it? No? no, I have not. Eric, have you read it? No. Not yet? David? Mm-hmm. No. Not yet. not yet. Okay, so I really like this book. It's, it packs a lot of really good common sense business advice. 
you know, one little tome. Um, but one of my favorite techniques that he does, and we talked about this earlier, Scott, was the five-fold why. And the five-fold why is a technique to help you find out what you actually want. And applying it is really easy. So whenever you want something, ask yourself why. As many times as needed until you get to the root of the want. And once you discover the root cause behind the want, you'll discover new ways to get there. So if you go to personalmba.com forward slash five dash full dash why, it kind of walks you through it. But, you know, I really feel like we're not in the passive income business necessarily. Like even say it's art of passive income. We're really in the freedom business, right? That's our business. We teach people how to become free. And it starts with, well, I want to make it more money, right? I want to have more passive income. Well, why do you want more money? Well, I don't want to be stressed out about money, right? Okay, so why don't you want to be stressed out about money? Well, I don't want to feel anxious, right? Well, why don't you want to feel anxious? Well, I want to feel secure. We all want to feel secure. Well, why do you want to feel secure, right? Well, so I feel free. I feel free. And then why do you want to feel free? Because I want to feel free. Boom, that is the root cause. I want to feel free. And Eric Peterson's like, what the hell is he talking about? This is so woo woo. <laughs> but that's okay. It does get you to the root cause. No, actually, one of my kids was knocking on my door and I was <laughs> hoping they didn't come in. All right. Well, well no worries. And, um, you know, for those dads out there, uh, last Sunday, happy Father's Day to everybody as well. And, uh, and thanks to people in, in the group as, for, as well as for wishing us a happy Father's Day. Um, really appreciate it. So, I hope everyone's getting value out of these roundtable podcasts. I know we're having a good time doing them. And uh, the only way we're going to be able to continue to do these is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. And we'll send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. If you want to learn step-by-step how to actually master this business and get started, there's two guys you want to talk to. It's David Banalis and Mike Zano. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and talk to them. See if this is right for you and learn more about flight school, the toolkit, one-on-one coaching, whatever you want to talk about, how to be a firefighter, fire, fighter, <laughs> you know, um, maybe the cabinetry business, anything. I'll talk them out of it. Talk, yeah, talk, you know, like why, why they're doing it. <laughs> it's awesome. So go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and uh, schedule a call. Guys, are we good? Yeah. yeah. I can't yeah. stop on that stick mule. I'm actually thinking about, I actually really like that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do something with that. Ah. I mean, it's no momentum. Yeah. <laughs> no. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I got a lot out of this podcast. I know for sure, like as soon as we, uh, we're done, I'm taking my glasses off and I'm just going to rest because I can't see anything. We'll check my email. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not joking. I'm really going to do that. Scott's like, oh, I see. Uh, how you know. Jet <laughs> All right. Jet All right. <laughs> should, Scott, should we do it? Let's do it, Mark. Ready? One, One two, two, three. Three. Let freedom ring. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. The best one yet. Maybe like six out of ten. All right. Mike Zeno, welcome back. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.